In this video, I'm going to show you 21 formulas that will level up your Excel and Google Sheets skills. To make it interesting, we'll be using the Formula 1 data from 2023 to demonstrate the formulas. If you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe down below. First up, we have perhaps the most important formulas, lookups. In the early days, VLOOKUP was an accepted practice. Here is just a few issues with it. First, it can only search left to right through data. Second, you have to count columns for the data you're retrieving. And third, you can't use more than one reference. So index match remains a favorite for most analysts, with XLOOKUP quickly gaining in popularity. Starting with index match, it is actually a powerful combination of two formulas. It combines both an index and a match formula. Let's say we wanted to find the team each of these three drivers is with. We can simply key in the index formula and select the array our desired output is stored. In this case, it's the teams. We then key in the match formula and first select our key. In this case, it's the driver's name. We then select the array where our key is stored in, which in this case is the driver's names. We finish with a zero and close with two brackets. As I drag the formula down, you can see the data starts to populate. This was a simple example, but it is incredibly powerful when you need to reference data across tabs or spreadsheets. A couple years ago, Microsoft graced us with the XLOOKUP formula. This is a much easier variation of the index match formula, and it has divided the analyst community. Some say it's slower than an index match formula, while others claim to see no difference. Look, it works, and I reckon it's easier. Simply key in XLOOKUP, select the key or driver's name, then the array the key is stored in, and then the output column. There you go, super simple, and it gets the same result. Next up, we're going back to the index match and adapting it to look for two or more conditions. Very often, you'll need to do an advanced lookup based on two or more factors. For example, I want to know the points scored by A, Max Verstappen, and V, in Singapore. That's two conditions. I simply start the formula with the output array, in this case being the points column. I then key in the match formula, and follow this with a one. Now I need to be crafty. I create an open bracket, then select my lookup array, such as the driver names, an equal sign, and then the key that I'm searching for, followed by a bracket. I then multiply this by another bracket, repeating the process for my second criteria. Repeat this as needed for as many conditions as are required. Once we have done this for our driver name and racetrack, we can simply key in a zero, close the formula with two brackets. We now have the points that Max scored in Singapore. If we change the lookup to Bahrain, you can see the value change. Super easy. You can also do this using the same logic with the X lookup formula as well. Moving along now to our fourth formula, we have the index match match. It sounds similar, but it's more powerful yet again. Index match match allows us to do a lookup both vertically and horizontally. It sounds ridiculous, but imagine you had a matrix of data to search against. Here is an example of Max Verstappen's data for 2023. We might want to find a piece of data for the Bahrain race. Let's start with the starting grid position. We simply type index and select all of the raw data itself, excluding the column and row headers. We then use a comma and type match. We now must do a vertical lookup. We simply select our key, in this case Bahrain, and then select the rows with the racetrack names. We then close this with a zero and a bracket. We use another comma and then do a horizontal lookup. We select the metric that we're looking for, in this case starting grid, and select the columns with the metrics we can search for. Close it with a zero and double brackets. We can now see this lookup in action. In the rows, we're looking up the race, Bahrain, and in the columns, the starting grid data. As with many races, Max had a starting grid position of first. Let's play around with this now by changing the track to Singapore. We can see that Max started 11th instead of first, like he did in Bahrain. But what about instead of looking for the starting grid position, we wanted to see his final position. We can type that in here and ta-da, there it is. This is the power of the index match match formula. Obviously, it's a bit of a pain to type these conditions in. Let's now move on to our fifth formula. There isn't quite a formula, but it certainly is an essential skill. Data validations. Simply select data and then select data validations. It is similar on Excel. Now add a new rule. Select drop down from a range and use the range selector tool to select our column data. Now click done. Repeat now for the position field, selecting the column headers. Now you have two drop downs that allow to search up and down the rows as well as left and right across the columns to find the data that you're looking for. Now you're a master of performing lookups. Let's now move over to another fundamental formula, if statements. These are very logical. If a formula provides us an answer of true, there will be a single output. If on the other hand it is false, 
then there will be another single output. Let's write a formula alongside each line of data. Starting with the simple one, if a line of data relates to a race in Bahrain, we insert a B. All else, we put in A. We then drag that formula right to the bottom. And as you can see, we have a B for the Bahrain race data and an NA for all others. So that's a nice and simple example. Our seventh formula allows us to use multiple if statements in a single formula. These are called nested ifs, simply because an if is nested within another if statement. Here is an example. Taking our formula from before, we want to not only see whether the race was in Bahrain, but also the points scored by the driver. We can simply add a new if statement within the true section of the original. Here is a decision tree to illustrate what we're trying to achieve. If the race is in Bahrain and the driver wins points, we should see a B in the points scored. If the race is in Bahrain, but the driver did not score any points, they'll just get a B. And if the race is not in Bahrain, we just want to see an A. Let's jump back into our formula. Where we had just a B before, we will overwrite this with a new if statement. If the position is less than or equal to 10, that is the threshold for scoring points, then we want to see a B and the points. Otherwise, we just want to see a B. Drag that right to the bottom of the data set, and there we have it. We can simply see all of the Bahrain races and those drivers that scored the points. Now let's jump into five formulas that are essential for a variety of uses. We have the min, the max, the sum, the average, and the count formulas. Let's use the Australian race results data to illustrate these formulas. Starting with the minimum, we simply key in min, select the array, and as you can see, the lowest point scored in Australia by any driver was zero points. If we do the same for maximum points, you can see the maximum points scored was 25. Now if we want to see how many points were scored in total, we can simply take the sum of the points. We simply key in sum, followed by the array. As you can see, we get 102. We can repeat this step to find the average point scored by any driver in a race, simply repeating what we did for the sum formula, but instead writing average. We get an answer of 5.1 points. Unless you're in the top seven drivers, you've scored a below average set of points in Australia. Now we can use a count formula to essentially count the number of drivers that raced in Australia. There are two ways that we can do this. We can use the simple count formula, which counts numerate data, such as the points in this case. This of course gives us a value of 20, but if we wanted to count any type of data, such as names or numbers as well, then we can use the count A formula. This one simply counts the non-empty cells. We can now be a bit more crafty with these five formulas as we can combine them with our if formulas from earlier. You simply tack a couple more letters to the end of the formula. Using sum as an example, we can use sum if where there's one lookup criteria or some ifs if there's one or more. For simplicity in this video, I'll be showing you the option that handles one or more conditions. Here's four drivers. We have the two Ferrari drivers, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc, and two part-timers, Nick DeVry and Liam Lawson. Let's analyze their 2023 performances side by side. To check their minimum and maximum points scored during the season, we simply use the expression min ifs or max ifs, selecting the output array, in this case the points, then our lookup array, in this case the driver's names and then the driver we're specifically looking for. As we drag that formula down, we can see at some point during the season, all four drivers scored zero points. If we repeat the same for the maximum points, this gives us something a bit more exciting to look at. Sainz scored a high of 25 points in a single race of the season. The others scored a high of 18, zero, and two points in a race. Looking at the sum of points by driver, Leclerc scored the highest of 185 points. Sainz followed with 178 points during the season, while Lawson gained just two. Looking over at the averages, Sainz scored an average of 8.1 points per race in 2023 while Leclerc was slightly higher at 8.4 points. Nick, of course, had an average of zero, while Lawson scored an average of 0.4 points per race. And finally, with a count ifs formula, we can see the two Ferrari drivers participated in 22 races, Nick De Vries in 10, and Lawson in just five races. These are just some examples of where we can use such formulas. Our 18th formula is the offset. This can be a useful tool to refer to another cell or set of cells a fixed distance away from a reference cell. As a simple example, let's say I want to find the value in the cell five above. I then get Nick De Vries. If I wanted to find the cell to the right of my current one, here you can see it takes the right one cell value. Mixing these together, let's go up nine cells and to the right, three cells. We then get Carlos Sainz's sum of points, 178. Now let's look for a collection of data. We can simply take our values from above and duplicate them just as so. Simply take the existing cell as our reference, minus four rows, same column, 
but now changing the height and width of the data we're looking for. As you can see, instead of taking a single cell, we now take a whole table. This can get even more crafty where we combine it with a match formula. Here I'll copy our data validation from earlier. In the cell below, I'll write my formula. I start with a simple offset formula and a cell reference of A1 at the top of the Formula 1 data. The second item I'll use in the row section is a match formula. I want to essentially find the number of rows until I reach the race data that I'm looking for. I must also subtract one to account for the data heading. We won't change columns from where we are now, so I use a zero. And finally, I know each race has 20 drivers and I'm wanting to just retrieve five fields of data. As you can see, we have five columns of Bahrain data coming through from the single formula. Changing the reference, we can now change it to Hungary as well. This is the power of the offset formula. And finally, we have our 19th, 20th, and 21st formulas the left, right, and mid. This allows us to isolate a specified number of characters from the left, right, and middle of a cell. If we have a cell with Oscar Piastri's name, let's run these formulas. We know Oscar, of course, has five characters. So all we need to do is key in left, select the cell, and then type in a five. We can then see the first five characters of the cell coming through. Using the right formula, we can do the same, knowing Piastri, of course, has seven characters. But what about if the number of characters changes throughout a data set? Now we need to introduce a new formula, search. This allows us to retrieve the number of characters before an identifier is found. In this case, we'll use a space as the identifier, as there is a space between both the left and right of Oscar and Piastri. So we take our formula from before, we overwrite the five with the search formula, type two speech marks around a space, then select our cell, enclosed with two brackets. We now have a formula that works with any cell, which finds all the letters before a space in a cell. Using Valtteri Bottas, you can see it works here as well. Jumping over into the right formula, we need a new cell again, the Len formula. This counts the total number of characters in a cell. Keeping our left formula, first we need to change the left into a right. We then insert a Len formula for the cell we're looking at then a minus in front of the search formula. And now we have the last name. Again, it works for Valtteri Bottas as well. So that covers the left and the right formulas. The mid allows us to find cells in the middle of a text string. Let's take the Alpha Tari race team name as an example. If we want to find the first six characters after the first space, we can simply type mid, then reference the cell we're looking at, then the position of the characters we wish to extract, in this case 12, and the length of characters we wish to extract, in this case 5, for Honda. You can also use the search functions here, and we're left with the string of Honda. These can be powerful tools for dissecting the contents of a cell after a concatenation. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see more content just like this. If you have any suggestions of other formulas that I can cover, please leave a comment down below in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.